Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share the any and everyone that you can. Just when we get out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. The Boston Celtics sit at the top of the Eastern Conference with a record of 13 and 4. The usual suspects seem to prepare the Celtics to win most nights, but last game does a different contributor. Namias Keita, who was the first Portuguese player in the NBA, really shine for the Celtics in their last win versus the Atlanta Hawks. Kata showed some worthy flashes in the preseason and was given 15 minutes last game with the injury to Chris Asposingas. Here's an in-depth look at how he impacted that game. First and foremost is his activity and presence around the rim. Okay, this is one of the more simpler plays that Kata made last game and one thing I didn't agree with, with what the Celtics were doing with him is that they had him in the drop almost the whole game. And as you'll see later on in this video, Kata does a nice job sliding his feet on an island with some of these guards. Now, of course, those guards aren't Trey Young. I'm not suggesting that he guard Trey Young on a regular basis, but there was a stretch in the fourth quarter where Trey Young just got about three straight wide open threes off the pick and rolls because the Celtics had Kata dropping so far. But on this play, Kata does a nice job of playing in between Trey and a Kongu. Trey Young is a master at having the paint defender in jail with if he's gonna shoot the floater or he's gonna throw the lob up. And Kata did a nice job every time Trey turned the corner of playing in between and making Trey Young choose which he's gonna do early. And this time Kata gets a piece of the shot. All right, now this play was very early in Kata's stint. And he did not score. You know, he did in this game, I think three for eight from the field. But this possession let me know what type of timing he was on. The Celtics are 19th in offensive rebounds, which isn't horrible, but it is towards the bottom 10 of the league. And Kata came in and got 10 rebounds in 15 minutes. About half of those were offensive. Now, on, on his own misses, for sure. But just having a guy... Again, the activity and the presence in the paint. He has some hook post game type stuff, right? And just the activity he brung on this very possession, even though, again, he did not finish it off with a make. The activity he brought on the boards, I knew that against this smaller Hawks team that he would be impactful. All right, so he does a nice job corralling the pass, staying in bounds and staying in control comes turns and here's that hook shot right he's he has a little bit of post game now it's not refined tim duncan any of that shit but all he needs to be able to do is when there's a guy smaller than him which a congo is even though he's a good center he's about six eight six nine kate is a true seven footer he needs to be able to have a move or two or three that he can go to that is effective and quick enough to get that shot off before somebody comes helps. So this is just a really simple, nice, in control move to get his first points of the game. Again, there's Trey with a wide open three off the drop coverage. He didn't start hitting those until like the fourth quarter, but okay. Got Kata with the rebound, screens for Tatum. Tatum makes a great pass and here we go. 19 even off his rebounds. Here's Kata fighting a Congo around three defenders to get the offensive rebound, right? This possession didn't amount to anything, I don't believe. But look, he's fighting. His presence, his activity in the paint gets the Celtics another opportunity. Hauser eventually gets the rebound. All right, so he gets a pass down from Jalen. A little bit too far off his liking. Gets to Tatum screens. And look, okay, this is one thing I really liked that was, you know, kind of flew under the radar for a lot of people. He makes himself large. I don't know if I have it in a lot of these clips. If I do have it, I'll point it out. When he's open or he's diving to the paint or he's coming up to catch the ball, he makes himself large. He makes sure that you can see him when he's open, right? So Tatum doesn't have him first time. Tatum airballs again. Knights even off his rebound. There's Kata. Falls right into his lap. He misses. Gets it right back. It's another offensive rebound. Gets the N1 again. Activity presence in the paint he's a guy that can do this stuff he makes himself large he uses his seven foot frame and he knows how to be a true big man all right here's another play look activity pin down look makes himself large makes himself large makes i'm here here you go Jalen. train again makes himself large it's easier to pass to a guy like this because look <laughs> you can't avoid this he's looking right at you with both his hands up now he gets in the paint, he's looking, patience, keeps the pivot foot, puts the shoulder in AJ Griffin, pivots again, goes up with the left, and we get another point. Now, for my favorite play from his stretch, right? Again, makes himself large again, 
Jalen doesn't see him, that's cool. Now, a Kongu and Bogdanovich are right in front of him. Now, this could still be an easy lob. If Sam throws this high enough, there's no way Bogdanovich is going to out jump Cater, right? But he sees that's not happening, so he tries to get in the line of sight of Sam. Like, that was a much easier pass than Sam throwing this lob up. So, right here, Sam could have easily do this. Nobody is even looking at Cater here. But Sam has another option to Pritchard, which is a good one. But you don't get the ball. Play's not over. Again, 19th and offensive rebound. Gets the rebound. Has a presence of mind. Oh, I'm, I'm going out of bounds. Where's Okongu's leg? Here we go. We save that possession. Get the ball back. Now we're back on the defensive side of the ball. Again, he's in another pick and roll. Well, not really, but... Okay, look. He's in a position, again, where he's in between. He makes himself large. He's putting his hands up. Put his, there it is right there. So this whole time, again, Trey is a master at deciding when to use the floater and when to throw the lob up. He does a really good job of having this last line of defense in jail with not knowing what Trey is going to do. But you see Kata doing a nice job of jabbing towards Trey, jabbing towards the Congo, putting his hands up. And now Trey is indecisive. He's in the air and we don't really know what he's doing with it. He didn't know what he was going to do with it. He goes up with it and comes down, tries to make a pass to a Congo, but those long arms, that seven foot frame, he makes himself large and he gets a steal. Now on to a really important part of Kata's game that I've liked since I've seen in preseason is his perimeter defense and his ability to at least hang with these guards. So look, comes out on DeJounte, not the coverage on Trey. You can say what you want about it, but look, he's he's in the stance. He's up on DeJounte. He's not giving him any cushion. I think that's a confidence thing because a guy like DeJounte, you know, you're not really afraid of him shooting threes over you. But look, he's sliding his feet. He makes DeJounte stop it. Look, he's sitting in the chair. He's sitting in the chair, hands down. Look, look, he ready. He ready. He ready. And then puts his hand on his chest. He's not waiting. He's not waiting for the And now look, DeJounte kind of does get past him, to be real. But I've seen this with Rob too many times. I'm not saying he's the athlete that Rob is, but he is three inches taller. He also has long arms. Right here, he's gearing up to send this to Portugal. He is gearing up to block this, but Al makes an incredible play, jumping up with one hand and getting a steal with the other. Look at 37-year-old Al Hofer. But I'm thoroughly impressed. And it's about two or three uh, clips after this one. And it's just... On occasion, this is a guy that you can switch on to guards like an all-star DeJounte. He's not a slow-footed seven-footer. He's a guy that's agile enough to switch with these guys. All right, before we get into the next clip, I just wanted to do a little quick flashback to the preseason. This is the play where I knew his perimeter defense was something. And in the last clip, I said, just at least stay with those guys. He's not just staying with it. He's excelling. He's turned these guys. Look, turn, turn, turn turn like he's there and he's sliding his feet and again he's from portugal he's the first portuguese player in the nba ever you know what the number one sport in portugal is right it's soccer i wouldn't be surprised i would bet some bread to say that he has a soccer background a lot of these seven foot guys from places where soccer is the number one sport they have good footwork and they're able to move at that size because you know, they maybe play soccer at that age. And now, if he didn't play soccer, I'll be surprised. But it may be even a lot more impressive, which because that would just mean he just naturally has feet like this. And this is crazy. Okay, this is the second clip from the Atlanta game. Derek White stopped to Jonte a few times, few times. And look, Adrian Griffin's a good shooter. He does a little head nod. He needs to actually pump fake this if he wants to, you know, get somebody up in the air. But you see the space he has, right? He does a little up fake, hair fake, but look how Kata jumps from pocket to pocket. Uh, he, he's already there. And again, he's seven foot, AJ's like six, six. His steps are larger than AJ's steps, of course, but that helps, and especially when he has good feet, he's not slow footed, he jumps. So now he's right beside AJ. AJ already picked up his dribble, so now he has to force something tough. And with that seven foot frame right beside him, and he tries to block it, great contest and we get the rebound now for the last clip of this game you see bogdanovich urging a congress at the screen and look this is the third time you've seen this in as many clips when kata plays defense he's putting his hand on these guys to make them feel him and i'm not sure if he'll continue to get away with this i'm not even sure if this is a foul or not but this is contact to a driver but the shit is working and 
he puts his hand on Bogdanovich, who was eight of eight from that point. He started hot. He's, he didn't miss a shot until like his 25th point. But he puts his hand on his chest, and he actually draws an offensive foul on Bogdanovich here because he's trying to discard him. But he's he's going stride for stride with Bogdanovich, and he would have blocked that shot if he didn't hear the whistle and was called an offensive foul on Bogdanovich. Now look, take this next point with a grain of salt. But the shot ain't broken. The shot, he left the gooseneck up there. The shot ain't broken. Now look, he does not need this to be effective. This is not something that I am expecting him to actually show in game. But God damn it, is he working on it? The shot ain't the, the shot ain't broken. And he can hit an open one. Again, this is not me going off the rails of imagining a, a cater that can eventually hit threes. No. This is me saying that he's working on it and his shot isn't broken. He doesn't need to be effective. I'm not expecting it, but it is something that looks like it's there. But that's the video. Once again, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and share the end there once you can. Just so we can get out there a little bit more. And I will see you guys in the next video. But this is Nick. Peace.